Hello aspirants, welcome to the daily editorial analysis brought to you by Shankar IS Academy. Today, 19th October 2024, displayed here are the articles that we are going to discuss today. The first article, Food Access is about Equitable Agri-Food System. This article is taken from the 16th October Hindu newspaper. We know the importance of 16th October served as World Food Day. This year's theme is Right to Food for Better Life and Better Future. It highlights the importance of access to safe and nutritious food. This article is all about it. And the second article, in a dangerous territory. We know that again, we can see a strain in Indo-Canada relationship. So this article is talking about Indo-Canada relationship. This article is taken from today's Indian Express. So without much delay, let's get into a discussion. Look at this newspaper article taken from Indian Express in dangerous territory. This article is talking about the recent arrest of Vigas Yadav in United States claiming that he was plotting an assassination in US behalf of Indian intelligence. Followed by the arrest of Vigas Yadav, the Canada also came forward and accused India. And this incident sparked a diplomatic crisis between United States, Canada and India, a trilateral diplomatic crisis. So let us discuss more about this in this context. First, we are going to start with the India-Canada relationships. So coming to the trade, the annual trade between India and Canada marks a value of $8 billion. And the key sectors of trade are agriculture, energy, education and technology. And the Canada's contribution to the trade, for example, Canada is exporting potash agriculture products to India, while India is exporting textiles, pharmaceutical products and uh, IT services. Indians are everywhere like that in Canada. Presently, it is home for nearly 1.4 million Indian diaspora and it comes around total 4% of the total population. And the India-Canada relationship also plays an important role in transition to green energy. For example, Canada is exporting uranium for India for nuclear energy program. It is very important for India's clean energy transition and we know that we are committed to net 2070. From the previous slide, we know that the Canada and India has a strong trade relation but at the same time, it also has challenges. For example, India-Canada relations are challenged by certain elements such as the Khalistan movement. Like we said, around 4% of the population in Canada are Indians. And within Indians, the majority of the population are Sikh community. And within communities, certain people are supporting Khalistan movements. And recently, we know that there was an assassination of Ardeep Singh Nijar. And this sparked a diplomatic crisis in the recent times between India and Canada. And another area of train between India and Canada relations are Canada's concern over human rights violation in India, particularly in the case of Kashmir and the minority. So this is this claim is not only made by Canada, even all other western countries have the same claim against india in the matter of human rights coming to the advantages and the disadvantages of india canada relationship the first major advantage for india is the trading opportunities we, we know that canada is a vast region so therefore it also has huge quantity of natural resources particularly energy resources and it is also a biggest supplier of agriculture products to india and the second one is the education and innovation in canada we know that canada is one of the best destinations for indian students therefore it will provide opportunities in education sector to boost the research as well as innovation and the third major advantage is canadian investments it recent times it particularly boosted the infrastructure and the real estate sectors in india and like we said the disadvantages are political irritants for example the recent Khalistan related issue and human rights stance of canada against india and also other issues such as trade barriers that includes tariff and non-tariff limitation non-tariff limitation includes you know the diplomatic paperwork. Non-tariff limitations include the bureaucratic paperwork in Canada to start trade. At the same time, tariff recently due to the, you know, the Chinese and you know, a large scale export to other countries, all the Western nations, in, including Canada, went for increasing their tariffs. So this also, you know, brings certain crisis in the trade relation between India and Canada. And now we are going to see the India-USA relationship. The annual trade between India and USA comes around a value of $191 billion according to 2022 data. And the major export of India are IT services, pharmaceutical products and textiles, while India imports major defense equipments, aircraft and technology. And we know that we have concluded many memorandum of understanding and agreements with the USA in the field of defense. And the next importance of the India-USA relationship is the strategic partnership. We know that India and USA both are members of Quad. It is very important for India to protect its interest in Indo-Pacific region. Therefore, in this way, the USA plays an important role in defense, counter-terrorism, cyber security and climate change.
and uh, through maintaining a good relation with the uh, USA, India can also maintain a balance of power in the Indo-Pacific region through countering China. And the key defense agreements with the USA are Comcasa, Lemova and Becca. Comcasa means Communication Compatible and Security Agreement and Lemova means Logistics Exchange Memorandum of Agreement and Becca. Becca means Basic Exchange and Cooperation Agreement for Geospatial Intelligence. So this agreements helps in logistics, information sharing as well as sharing of intelligence. And through this we can protect India from security crisis as well as we can also play an important role in protecting our maritime interest. And what are the challenges in India-USA relationship? The first major challenge is related to the trade disputes. That includes tariff rate in USA and lack of or the difficulty in access the markets in USA and also concerns related to the intellectual right properties. We know that like I said the due to the dumping all the western nations including US and Canada went for increasing their tariff and this poses a great difficulty uh, to the Indian products in the US market. At the same time accessing the US market due to the difficult bureaucratic documentation or the doc paperwork it is also posing a difficult condition for the uh, Indian producers or investors in the in the US market. At the same time issues related to the intellectual property rights related to ownership and patent. But at the same time US also raising certain concerns that India is following certain and protectionist policies. Therefore, these are the trade disputes between India and USA. And coming to the defense sector, there also we have tension because US, it is a superpower and trying to maintain its supremacy in a particular part of the world. Not only the particular part of the world, maybe across the world. But India, we are following a non-alignment movement to even today, even in the multipolar world. Therefore, it is sometimes brings certain strains in the relationship between India and USA because, because recent purchase of S-4 missile from Russia brought a sanction risk from USA. The next challenge is related to visa restrictions. That is, recently the USA increased H1, H1B visa restrictions. Therefore, it will impact the Indian IT professionals and the other people living in USA. Now, we are going to see the advantages and the disadvantages in the India-USA relationship. The first major advance is India-USA economic and financial partnership because we know that the USA is a powerful country and you know they are ready to expand at any moment of time. Therefore, it, will, it is an opportunity for India to attract investments in the field of technology, artificial intelligence, space and cyber security. And at the same time, USA is also plays an important role in defense supplies. For example, Apache. For example, we brought Apache helicopters, C-130 aircraft, P-81 Pesadoni, P-81 post dawn patrol aircraft so these agreements for agreements for purchasing all these defense uh, defense products we have made with the usa and us is also an important partner in the field of energy export because recently us has become the largest exporter of liquefied natural gas and oil to india which is very essential for india's energy security and coming to the disadvantages the first major disadvantage with the india us relationship is the economic dependence on us we know that us is a nation it uh, uh, which can change its policy at any point of time therefore economically depending on them is not right but still we are de depending on them especially in the field of information technology pharmaceuticals if any moment if US changes its policy, it will significantly impact the Indian economic trade with the USA. And the second one is geopolitical balancing issues. For example, the idea of India's strategic autonomy. We know that we are still following the non-alignment policy even in the multipolar world. Therefore, India's relation with Russia and Iran sometimes brings certain clash and strains in the India-US relationship because USA does not have a good relation with Russia and Iran. So these are the advantages and disadvantages in the India-USA relationship. Now we are going to see the trilateral relation between India, USA and Canada. India is very strong in the international platform. But at the same time, certain differences with the Canada and USA brings clashes. For example, the Khalistan issue and the recent murder of the Hardeep Singh Nijar has brought a diplomatic crisis between India and Canada relation. And at the same time, India's relation with Russia is also is also a matter of tension between India-USA relationship. We already discussed this. And the next area of tension is Western criticism on human rights. So, like I said, not only Canada, all Western nations, almost every Western nation has the same stance against India related to human uh, human rights violations. Issues are Kashmir and minorities. Even though we have these two issues, India is multilateral. India is cooperating strongly with these two nations in forums such as Quad. Quad includes Japan, Australia, India and USA. So it protects India's interest in Indo-Pacific. While India at the same time is a member of five eyes. It is an intelligence sharing alliance led by Canada. And at the same time, India is strongly engaging with these two nations in other global forums related to economic development, 
and climate changes. So this will definitely strengthen India's relationship. But the only issue is the nature of the Western criticism and certain differences between India, USA and Canada. So if you can sort out these issues, definitely we can have a permanent, strong and good relation with the these two powerful nations. Now we are going to see the economic impact of India-Canada USA trilateral relation. So like I said India-Canada relations trade relation stands around 8 billion dollar while the India-USA trade relation stands around the value of dollar 191 billion and this trade relation significantly plays an important role in GDP growth of India. At the same time the strong relation with these two nations are very important to attract foreign direct investments and other opportunities in India as well as in Canada and USA. Coming to the Canadian investments, like we already said, the Canadian pension funds are the major investors in the field of real estate, infrastructure and renewable energy. Comparing with the USA, we can say that the Canada's contribution is less, but even though it plays a significant role in the field of energy and agriculture, because the major export of Canada to India are agriculture products and energy. And coming to the Next importance of this trilateral relation is the diaspora remittance. The diaspora remittance contributes to the foreign reserve in India at the same time, particularly the US remittance of remittance of dollar 87 billion makes it as an important or a crucial source of foreign currency. Coming to the conclusion, the impact of India, USA, Canada relation. So how it is going to impact India? Uh, we already said it, right? It plays an important role in economic ties with the USA. It plays an important role in economy through strong trade relation with the USA, Canada. Therefore, it will attract investment and remittance and it is, it is a key factor to, to the GDP growth. Second one is investments in the field of IT sector because we know that we, we are the one of the best nations providing best quality of IT services, especially the cities like Bangalore are known for IT sector. So definitely the trade relation or the diplomatic relation with Canada and USA will boost the India service sector. And the next importance is US largest trading partner, especially in the especially in the field of textile, pharma and agri products. That is recently US has emerged as the largest trading partner in these sectors. And the last major imp importance is the energy security from uranium, which is very important for the transition to clean energy it is given by canada and at the same time usa is providing liquefied natural gas therefore both nations are important in the field of energy security so in this topic we discussed the trilateral relationship between india usa and canada and these three nations has a great future therefore with this understanding these three nations plays an important role in the global arena in every sector in almost every sector so with this understanding try to answer this main practice question the question is bring out the intricate relations of usa canada india which impacts the global arena so we can say that the trade relation first we have to answer the question in every aspect for example in the how the india canada uh, usa relation impacts the climate impacts the climate action trade at the same time defense so you have to touch all these different aspects and with this idea try to answer this mains practice question and post it in the comment section and we will review and reply for your answer look at this newspaper article taken from hindu food access is about equitable agri food System. This article is from 16th October 2024. We know the importance of 16th October. It is observed as the World Food Day. And this year, the theme for the World Food Day is Right to Foods for Better Life and Better Future. To implement this theme, the international organizations such as Food and Agriculture Organization, International Fund for Agriculture Development and the World Food Program is collaborating with the Government of India to uphold the right to food. No doubt it is a basic human rights and in other sense it is a fundamental human rights. Even though it is not explicitly mentioned in the constitution of India, it is interpreted under article 21 that is right to life. So let us discuss more about the food security, its importance in this context. So World Food Day, we will start with the importance of that day. It is observed on every October 26 and for this year the theme is right to food for better life and better future we already said the significance of this theme is highlighting the access to safe food nutritious and affordable food to everyone in the society like i said the key organizations are collaborating with the government of india to implement this theme now we are going to understand about the food security what is food security see food security can be simply defined as a situation where everyone in a nation or a society have access to safe nutritious and healthy food at any point of time and the the principal food security 
is standing on three pillars. First one is availability, second one is accessibility and third one is affordability. Availability that is the food should be available that is a sufficient quantity of food should be available in a particular nation. So it is related to production, import and reserve and that should satisfy the people. And second one is accessibility. This principle is pointing towards the distributive effectiveness of a nation that is the produced food or the imported food or the food that is present there should reach every new can corner of the nation and for that we have public distribution system and the last one is affordability the produced food and the accessing food should be affordable at a fair price if the price of the food is very high then it will marginalize people from accessing it therefore these three principles or these three pillars are not substituted they are complementary now we are going to discuss the importance of food security it is important to ensure the fundamental well-being of the people because the food security ensures better health and social stability because if there is no sufficient or nutritious food then the people will experience malnutrition if the people are malnourished then it will become a problem because the people will be more vulnerable to infections and diseases if people are more vulnerable to infections and diseases means there will be less productivity if there is less productivity then the growth and development of the nation will be questioned therefore ensuring food safety and security is essential to ensure the basic right and also to ensure the health and development of individuals as well as the nation coming to the case of India, we have made significant progress, especially in the post-independence period to ensure the food security. And in the post-independence period, we adopted better science and technology to ensure food sufficiency and uh, food security through green revolution, white revolution. But India's steps to ensure food security can be traced even back to the ancient times. For example, Harpen culture, they are very conscious about their food storage. We know the granaries uh, discovered from Harpen cities and the Mahasthan inscription from the 3rd century BC talks about certain initiatives taken by Emperor Ashoka to ensure food supply during the time of famine or other natural disasters. and coming to the medieval times Alauddin Khilji and his market system are known for ensuring food security as well as it is also known for its resistance to price fluctuations in the market and later Firoz Shah he established a separate department for agriculture office but later due to the colonialism due to the colonial agriculture policies the nation went to severe famine I'm not saying that the India had a great history of food security definitely not in the ancient and medieval times frequent wars and frequent outbreak of famine and drought severely questioned the food security at the same time uh, the the condition of farmers as well as the people in the lower strata were were very poor during the medieval as well as in the ancient times there is no doubt in that but we have a history of steps taken to ensure food security that's what i'm saying even though the world has taken including india has taken a lot of steps to ensure food security we have a concerning statistics here that is according to the food and agriculture organization around 733 million people across the world is facing severe hunger now we are going to see other steps of india to ensure the food security in other perspectives for example the national food security act 2013 this act not only put as an essential product instead this act covers the food as a matter of right we will discuss the importance of this act shortly and the second initiative is the fortified rice distribution fortified rice means enhanced rice this rice contains certain essential minerals and vitamins such as folic acid iron which is a very essential to fight the problem of anemia and government approved the distribution from july 2024 to december 2028 and india also have engaged in collaborative framework for example for this for this year india's indian government is collaborating with the food and agriculture organization international fund for agriculture development and world food program and india is also following both type of procurement that is decentralized and centralized centralized and decentralized procurements are very helpful in ensuring the collection of food at the same time preserving the diversity in the food production now we are going to see certain initiatives taken by the government of india to ensure the food security uh, first major initiative is essential commodities act in 1955 the objective of this act is to reduce inflation by managing trade in essential commodities for example if certain commodities are you know recognized as essential then we can regulate its production its stock limit its supply and distribution and the next major initiative is national food security act 2013 like i said it is not seeing the food as a matter of conception rather than this act covers food as a matter of right. At present, this National Food Security Act covers nearly 75% of the rural population and 50% of the urban population. And under this, we have taken certain key initiatives such as Andiyodhi Anna Yojana, which provides 35 kilogram of food grains per month for disadvantaged households. And the next initiative is priority households. The households which are classified 
under the priority households will receive 5 kg of food grains per person per month and the next initiative is national food processing mission the objective of this mission is to transform the raw materials into edible products using technology simply we can say value addition for example a packet of milk is sold at a rupees of 20 if we can convert the milk to yogurt then it can be sold at the rupees of 25 so the value is adding through value addition it can also enhance the durability portability taste and convenience of that product and the next initiative is pradhan mandri fasal bima yojana the, the famous corp insurance policy it was launched in the year 2016 to provide insurance coverage for farmers against a crop failure and the eligibility farmers sharecroppers and tenant farmers are covered under this government program and objective of the scheme includes income stabilization and promoting innovation because we know that india especially the asia is becoming vulnerable to frequent extreme weather events and india is experiencing cyclone as well as flood every year Therefore, if farmers are experiencing crop failure, definitely after the crop failure, they will hesitate to go back to agriculture. So, through this Pradhan Mandri Fasal Bhima Yojana, we can bring back farmers to the field even after a disaster. Therefore, this insurance coverage is very important. And the next initiative is National Agriculture Market or ENAM. It provides a platform for the farmers to sell their products and it ensures transparent price system. And the next is International Year of Millets 2023. That is the India's initiative to recognize the year 2023 as the Millet Year was recognized by Food and Agriculture Organization and in the year 2018. And later United Nations General Assembly also recognized the year 2023 as the International Year of Millets. The objective of this program is to raise awareness about the millets and its role in nutrition and sustainability. We know that millets are nutritious at the same time it is drought resistant and it, it is easily cultivatable. Therefore, it needs less management and it is resistant to the adverse climate changes. Therefore, in the scenario of an accelerated climate change, the millets will have a great role to do in the future in ensuring food security. And the next key initiative is Mega Food Park Scheme. It was launched in 2008-9. It was implemented by the Ministry of Food Processing Industries. The objective of this scheme is to connect agriculture producers with the, with the markets to reduce wastage and enhance farmers income now we are going to see the challenges in agriculture sector the first major challenge is faced by the small marginal farmers that is nearly 82 percentage of agrarian households are facing difficulties due to resource degradation and limited market access and many other issues such as climate change and the fragmentation of land you know that according to the labor force according to the periodical labor force survey 2020-23 it says that the land fragmentation is the major reason behind the the low productivity of agriculture but in the last 10 years india is recording a good average in the in the in the agriculture sector but you have to note that the the good average is due to the enhanced performance in the field of poultry and horticulture not because of the crop cultivation so therefore it is a high time due to uh, to give uh, more importance to crop cultivation too and and the next major challenge is climate change so we know that the climate is becoming unpredictable and also frequent extreme weather events are experiencing these days and therefore it is a high time to adopt sustainable agriculture practices to build the agriculture sector more resilient to adverse climate impact so we discussed the what is food security what are the initiatives taken by the government of india to ensure the food security and how india is taking further steps to enhance better food security so in this background what can be done to ensure better food security so for that we need a collective responsibility and a collective approach that is to ensure equitable access to the food we need a sustainable agriculture practices to make agriculture more resilient and then only we can provide an equitable access to the food in the near future and then we have the shared commitment that is in the beginning of this discussion of this topic we said that the international organizations like agriculture organization international fund for agriculture development and the world food program is collaborating with the government of india so this kind of you know collaborative approach should take place in every part of the world then only we can ensure the food security in every part of the world and then we have the then we have to provide support for all that is that is we have to take certain steps to uplift both agricultural and the non-agriculture family and we should also take steps to reduce food inequalities and other measures to strengthen other aspects of livelihood of every person and every families in the nation not only in the nation across the world so with this we will try to answer this main question the question is analyze the implications of climate change on agriculture practices in india how can sustainable practices be integrated into agricultural framework to ensure food security so this entire question can be divided into two parts first part we have to analyze what is the impact of change climate change on agriculture practices of india and then in the second part, we have to describe 
how we can incorporate or integrate the sustainable practices in the agriculture framework to ensure the better food security so the first part we can address issues such as you know uh, the frequent how this frequent flood how the frequent drought or the heat waves is impacting the agriculture and how the air pollution is impacting the agriculture so that things we can address in the first part in the second part you, you can mention about certain measures such as you know uh, we are uh, we are giving importance to ethanol production to reduce the agriculture wastage that will provide that will provide income to the farmers so they can go for sustainable practices because if there is less income or you know investments then the farmers will hesitate to take risk to adopt that means risk in the sense to adopt new practices so definitely through better investments through better credit facility to through better government supports and policies we can integrate the sustainable practices into agriculture framework so in the second part you have to address this so try to answer this main question with this idea and post it in the comment section we will review and reply for with this we are coming to the conclusion for today's newspaper analysis so if you like the video hit the like button and also give your feedbacks as comments and share this content with your friends to make the competition more healthy and before leaving this channel don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell icon to receive the on time update thank you have a nice day